Hello everyone, today we're taking a look at the Memorial Windows 95 and 98 virus and considering the subject matter of this particular virus I thought it would be fitting to sort of pay tribute to uh, one of the leading antivirus researchers and uh, basically developers that the world recently lost. Uh, his name was Peter Zor. He worked for Symantec, F-Secure, McAfee, you name it, and developed many different systems and basically just sort of helped to pioneer the field of antivirus research and technology. Uh, I wrote a lot of books. I have one in particular of his called The Art of Computer Virus Research and Defense, which there is a link for in the description if you want to check it out. It does give a very comprehensive look at uh, the history of computer viruses as well as breaks them down and just sort of gives a very, very detailed, very good overlook of the computer virus scene. And he will be missed. So let's get down to the virus. This is actually one of the most complex Windows 95 and 98 viruses. However, most of that goes under the hood in infecting files, and I won't be able to really show you that. But what makes it so complex is that, oops, as you can see, uh, I did not install the correct DLL for the virus to run, so we'll go ahead and do that really quick right now. I have it in here somewhere. I think I have to view hidden folders. But anyway, this virus infects not only Windows 95 and 98 files, but also uh, msdos.com and .exe files. So, you're not even sure what you're working with. Um, it, the virus authors knew that in order to reach the most people, there were still a lot of people using MS-DOS bulletin board systems in these days, so they needed to infect those type of files as well in order to spread this virus. And as you can see, it's very large, over 34 kilobytes, and most of that goes into that code, and also contains several antivirus, anti-antivirus functions. So when we run it, we don't really see much of anything. It's very stealthy, it hides its presence on the system very well. You can't see... Well, actually, we just see programs crashing. That's not generally what you want to see in a virus, but... It seems to have broken everything, but that's alright. Anyway, we'll switch over the date. Oh, we can't switch the date because it's broken. Well, that's fun. We'll restart and we'll see if we can fix anything with this. If it will let us restart. In fact, we're just going to hard reset this virtual machine. Okay, things are still crashing. Things are still crashing a lot. Okay, we're gonna need to boot into DOS really quick. And change the date so we can see this virus in action. Activates on the 10th of April. And we should see its payload after we boot back into DOS, er, into Windows. We're still erroring. It's not really one I wanted to see. Here we go. If we run the virus, we can see that it's actually, as the name suggests, a memorial virus. Clinton Haynes, also known as Harry McBungus, Terminator Z, and Talon, died of a drug o overdose on his 21st birthday, April the 10th of 1997. During his time as a virus writer, he wrote the No Frills Family X Fungus Damon and 1984 viruses. He was a good friend of Vlad, and so he wrote this virus in his honor. We hope it's good enough to do him justice. Vlad remembers. Rest in peace. And you'll see this on every executable you try to run on April the 10th. As basically just an overreaching tribute to their fallen friend. Um, well, actually, all of our programs seem to be corrupted, which is kind of a pain in the ass. But I guess that's what virus writers would want to have their friends remembered by. As we can see, CD player, CD player still works, but I guess a few of these files were infected incorrectly, which caused them to be corrupted. But as you can see, everything we run gets this pop-up message with it, even though we can't see it. Well, it was popping up. You see, viruses never act the way you expect them to whenever you're running and recording. See, FTP does it. I don't know why everything else doesn't do it. This does it. So basically, it doesn't delete any files or format your drive. It's just a tribute to their friend that they lost, which is quite touching in a way. And so, that's about it for the um, Memorial Virus, and thank you for watching.